guys. So as part of my watercolor basic series over on the blog and somewhat over here on YouTube, I'm going to be doing a watercolor demonstration today with my character Naomi from my comic Seven Inch Kara. We're going to be mostly just focusing on skin tone, but we're also going to add some gold accents. So this has been inked for quite a while. I feel a little guilty for that. And I inked it with a Sailor Mitsuo Ida, which is Copic Mark proof and waterproof if you allow it to fully dry. And I'm using a Tombow eraser, it's one of my favorites, to go ahead and erase the graphite out from underneath. The paper that I'm using is Windsor & Newton watercolor paper. Um, I'm actually using the paper from the small pad. This is not the Bockingford paper. Now that I've got everything erased, I'm going to go ahead and tape this down to my working. Actually, I'm gonna go grab a piece of chipboard and tape this down to that. I'll be right back. Whenever I finish a block of fluid watercolor paper, if it's of enough, if it's a large enough size, like eight by eight or nine by 12, I will save the chipboard off the back so that I can attach smaller watercolor pieces to it. Now, you could tape it to your desk, but I've found that if you have a craft mat, like my Ink Essentials craft mat here, it will still cause buckling. So it's really best if you just go ahead and tape it to chipboard. And I'm just using plain crepe paper masking tape. That's what I usually use, especially for pieces this size. I know some people use washi tape, but I tend to use a little too much water for washi tape to be ideal. So I'm gonna go ahead and tape this down and I'll check back in with you guys. So we've got our piece mounted. This will help prevent it from buckling. This isn't actually stretching. We didn't use water in this process. This is just to hold it tight while we're painting and adding water. So I'm gonna go grab my palettes and paints. I'll see you guys in a few minutes. All right, guys, we've got our watercolors off to the side. We've got a multi-weld palette and we have at least one cup of clean water. If you're working in a larger environment, than I am, I highly recommend you go for two because I'm going to have to change my water out fairly regularly. So I want um, mostly brown tones in this. So I think maybe a Payne's gray for the background might look really nice. So I'm gonna use this little plastic pipette. These things are hugely useful in my studio. I highly recommend you guys um, pick some up. They're very inexpensive. I'm gonna use a little pipette to go ahead and fill one of my wells rather than pouring it and risk spilling and drip a couple of drops onto my Payne's gray. Now, while I'm mixing color and waiting for colors to activate, I'm gonna fill another well and I'm gonna activate the colors that I use for Naomi's skin, which is a pretty large range of browns and a little bit of red violet to give her some vitality in her skin. I've also gone ahead and selected the brushes that will probably be the most useful. You guys know I have a penchant for rounds, but I do have one filbert in there. The filbert being this one right here. Filbert's very similar to a flat, except it's got sort of a tongue or a cat's tongue shape to it. It's been rounded off at the edges. And this is a synthetic for my larger brushes, especially for my flats. I just go ahead and get synthetics. Um, I haven't noticed too much of a difference. So, go ahead and get a little bit resituated and apply a wash starting at the top. And it's a very light mixture right now. We can always darken it. We can even use the texture of the paper to make sort of a faux gradiated wash because the ridges of the paper will catch all the color leaving the valleys of the paper relatively untouched. So, I like how that looks. I'm gonna actually go in and grab just a little more Payne's Gray, mix it up on my brush, and go ahead and brush it directly into my painting. And hopefully, this will really contrast nicely with her skin color and the gold we're gonna add later. So I propped this up a little bit to encourage the paint to flow towards the bottom of the image. And I need to allow this to dry fully before I can continue. 
All right, so while we wait for this to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside for a moment, just so that I don't drip on it, because that's been happening a lot with me lately. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and mix Naomi's skin tone. And I use a lot of different um, influence browns, and these are all earth pigments. So I use some Indian yellow and some Van Dyke brown, and then I grab a little of um, red violet and a little more, and then a little bit of sepia. And of course I need to swatch because when you goof with darker skin tones, it is much more apparent and it's harder to fix. <clears throat> but I'm not seeing anything handy that I can swatch on. I have to do it off camera. Looks like an okay start. So I will let this finish drying. You see how it's all bubbled up? Well, by taping it down to the chipboard, it will dry flat. So I'm just gonna let that have a few minutes to dry. And I'll check back in with you guys with the skin tone. All right, guys, so while we've got our Payne's Gray going, I'm gonna go ahead and add some shadow to Naomi's eyes. So I'm gonna add some to the tops like that. And if I wanna go a little bit darker, I can just float some in. And floating is when you add a dab of darker color into um, an already applied wash. And it's good for um, if you have other layers and you don't want to disturb those prior layers by um, swishing your brush over the paper. Okay, so we need to let that dry and then we can go ahead and get started on the skin. All right, guys, so now that this has started to dry, we're gonna swoop on over and grab some red violet, mix it up over here in the flat part of our palette. And we're gonna use this to go ahead and put down an early layer. Let me zoom in. Of blush and lipstick. Very similar to the way I do this when I do alcohol markers. And I'm done. Going to go ahead and blend it out using a clean but wet brush. And hopefully this will help influence the skin color that we're going to put down on top of it, make for more believable skin tone. And it doesn't actually have to be too, too neat and tidy because we are gonna be painting over it and I'm gonna go ahead and swoop some in under her neck and at the tops of her ears. And lips a little dark. So I'm gonna re-wet it and then use a paper towel to dab some of that off. And that's one of the nice things about the Windsor and Newton watercolor paper is it's very easy to rework. All right, so I'm gonna let that dry. All right, guys, now that that's dry, we can finally start applying the first skin uh, layer. And you wanna mix it up, especially if it's been sitting for a few minutes, because some of these colors will sort of settle out. And when I do Naomi, um, I paint her hair, the first layer, of her hair and skin at the same time. That also helps tie everything together. And I pretty much do a basic fill. Now this is a nice light color. It's gonna dry even lighter, so it's perfect for those highlights. And we're just going to keep adding layers until we build the skin tone up to what it needs to be. And you see, by applying the red first, um, we went ahead and influenced the skin color under uh, above it, but it also is, um, 
it's easier to blend. Uh, we might risk lifting if we try to apply the blush a little too late. Move my water cup up some so I can push the whole thing up a little bit. Now, if you really wanted to, you could fill in these leaves at this time. Um, we're going to paint them gold, so I am leaving them blank because I might want to underpaint them with yellow and make the gold look a little richer. And I'm also trying to prevent my paint from pooling too much in any particular section. So if I see it pooling, I go ahead and grab some and bring it elsewhere. And I'm using right now a Creative Mark Rhapsody. Uh, that is a Kalinsky Sable brush in a size four. They have a fairly large belly. The belly is what holds your water or your paint. So you can cover a fair amount of ground. Now I'm gonna blend this out just a little bit down here. There we go. And then I'm gonna let that dry. All right, guys, once this layer is dry, although I guess it's not actually because it's still cool to the touch. It is dry enough though that I can at least paint in, start painting in her eyes. Now, Naomi has hazel eyes and they start with a green base. And Windsor and Newton makes this really beautiful uh, green yellow called green gold. And I find that for Naomi, it's just a beautiful, color that works really well. And then I'm going to float in a pyrroline blue. And I don't want too, too much because I don't want it to take over her eyes. So I'm just gonna lightly, lightly brush it in and then leave it to dry. And this can be, oh, this can be layered to suit your needs. All right, guys, so uh, Naomi's base skin tone has dried and I'm gonna try to rearrange things so that you can better see the close up. And I'm gonna go ahead and move to a smaller brush just while I'm working on her eyes. You see, we got this really nice gradation between the very vivid, uh, almost a chartreuse green and the blue. Um, and I'm really tempted to leave her eyes as they are, cause that's really pretty, but I'm gonna have to just take things a step further, I think. I'll start out by adding some blue t details. And then once that dries, I'll go ahead and add in um, either a green or a brown wash, depending on you know what I think will best suit this particular illustration. Since her eyes are hazel, they do change color. Uh, now I wanna do another layer of skin tone. So we're gonna start with the domino mask and comic fans have an idea of what I'm talking about. And the reason we're starting with that is because that's an area of the face that is pretty much always in some type of shadow. And, oh, how did I get like all the dark color in one stroke and then I should have mixed it. Now we're gonna go ahead and start really defining the planes of her face. And I'm gonna blend a lot of this out. And that's why it's, if you paint, enjoy painting darker skin tones, or if your characters have darker skin tones, um, it's important to work on nicer watercolor paper because you want your paints to stay workable so you can get really nice blends. If you're having difficulty handling darker skin tones, you may need to upgrade your paper choice. So go ahead and start blending now. The paint will dry much lighter, so we are gonna to need to go ahead and mix a darker skin tone. 
All right, let that dry. All right, guys, while I'm waiting on that to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and do a very light layer of a brown just to help sell the sort of hazel appearance. And while I wait for that to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and mix my brown a little bit darker, my skin tone brown, that is. All right, guys, now that this is mostly dry, we can go ahead and go in with another layer of skin. And painting skin tones, especially darker skin tones, is all about building up shadows and forms. So it does take a patient artist, but I definitely think it's worthwhile. So I mixed some sepia and some Van Dyke brown in. Go ahead and blend it out a little bit. Actually, I'm a little, little concerned because we're a little on the pale side here for Naomi. She's actually quite a bit darker than this. So we'll go ahead and just keep building up those forms. The problem with watercolor is it does dry much lighter than what you put down. So that definitely does take some getting used to. Now, if you have an area where you'd like to soak up some of that color because you want to leave a highlight, just go ahead and grab a clean paper towel. And while the paper is still wet, you can dab highlights into the cheeks by folding it up kind of tight like that. All right, I need to let that dry and see what we've got. Unfortunately, I think that picked up some of the blush I'd put down as well. All right, guys, I feel like I'm having a little bit of trouble tonight with Naomi's skin. Uh, sometimes there's a little bit of seek and find when it comes to painting her. I am gonna go ahead and reestablish color in her cheeks and her lips. And I'm gonna go ahead and blend her cheeks out. And reestablish that and that up there as well as on her eyelids. And I'll blend that out as well. Sometimes it takes multiple layers to get the thing right. And let that dry. All right, guys, so that's dry. Now I'm gonna try another layer of skin tone. And I've been mixing it progressively darker. We've talked about in other videos how contrast is one of the keys to making sure your watercolors don't get too muddy, especially your watercolors for illustration. So hopefully we've got enough contrast here for her skin not to look too chalky or muddy. That can be a problem with darker skin tones depending on your paint and your pigments is sometimes darker skin tones can look muddy instead of clear. I guess I should say rather translucent. So on this layer, I'm going to blend out very minimally. And we'll see what that dries to. All right, guys. 
So I'm at the stage where every time I add a new layer of skin tone, I mix it a little bit darker, trying to build up that contrast we talked about. Also don't want to get too heavy with her though. So this might actually be the last layer of skin I do, except for some uh, violet shadows. All right. So I'm gonna let that dry. While I do that, I'm gonna mix up her hair. And I like to use a Blix Tube Sepia. And also, I wanna say it's um, like a, a carbon black or a neuro black. It's um, a brownish black that works really nice for very dark hair. So I'll go ahead and mix that up and let that dry and I'll check in with you guys later. All right, guys. So um, we have the skin tone finished and I know I said I was going to mix the hair base uh, off camera, but honestly, I got distracted with Jolly Ranchers. So for Naomi's hair, I'm starting with Blix Sepia and um, either a carbon black or a Nero black. And I'm using a fairly small brush and I'm going to apply the first layer in just sort of like a squiggly motion to replicate curly hair. And if you're a fan of masking fluid, I'm not, I've never had good results with it. Um, you can mask off all those little leaves. Like I said, I've never had positive experiences with it. So I'm just going to do my best to work around them. And if I sound funny, it's because I've got a Jolly Rancher squirreled away in my cheek. And I thought I could talk around it better than I apparently can. I feel like I got away with this a lot in high school, but honestly, the teacher is probably just letting it slide. And moving in like a squiggly motion, you're going to leave some highlights. And the goal is to put down less paint for each layer you, um, each layer of paint you put down, leaving more and more highlights. So I'm gonna let that dry. All right, guys, so our first layer has dried. I'm actually gonna go back in to the skin with a shadow color that I mixed up using a whole bit, whole binds neutral tint, um, a blue purple and a reddish purple. Unfortunately, I don't quite remember their names and I'm adding it under the chin, but it doesn't look like it's strong enough. So I'm going to add some more neutral tint, add some more purples, throw in some Daniel Smith Lunar Violet while I'm here. Let's see if we can't get that in a more appropriate It's still kind of light. We've talked a lot about, um, you know, how you want to use contrast to help uh, make your watercolors pop, to help prevent them from getting too muddy. So even though I am using this shadow color fairly widely right now, it's mostly just to help define the planes of the face in a way that I wasn't really able to when I was just working with the brown paint alone. I'm definitely going to mix that shadow color darker. This is going to dry really light. I'm going to mix that shadow color darker and allow this to dry and then get back to it. Okay, so the first layer of shadow color dried. Let's try applying another we really don't want to make too many mistakes in terms of, of applying color because, you know, her skin tone will get kind of muddy. And right now it's still pretty clear. 
And when I say muddy, what I mean is that um, sometimes pigments will give a chalky appearance. And when you're working with earth pigments, that can be um, particularly true or opaque pigments. So if you are mixing opaque colors in with your skin tones, you do want to be careful because layering color on top of that will make it appear muddy. So I think I'm gonna leave well enough alone, except to darken some of the red on her lips. Gosh, I kinda wanna add a little more blush to her cheeks as well. So I think what I'll do is I'll let this dry and I will do that after this is dry. And that way I have less risk of disturbing pigments. All right, guys, so um, that layer has dried. Now we can get back to working on her hair. I'm still not entirely thrilled by the shadow layer, so I'm just going to mix up here in this well that you can't see um, a much uh, stronger mixture, much a more concentrated mixture of the color I have in mind to apply directly under her chin where there would be a cast shadow. I still feel like her face is just not as saturated as I would like. So I'm going to go in again with the brown, which I, you know, I shouldn't really do. I need to, I need to be more decisive on when I'm calling it quits on a layer. Right, so now is a fine time to go ahead and add that yellow base coat we talked about. And I'm gonna do that with Soho Indian Yellow. And that's just to give the gold something to sort of bounce off of. Quinacridone Gold, like Hoare Quinacridone Gold is also an excellent choice for um, an undercoat if you're using Windsor & Newton's gold ink. And I'm doing this now because as the layers of her hair get thicker, um, adding loose, like a wet glaze like this might reactivate some pigments and make them bleed in. So now is really the time for it. And once, yeah, once that's dried, we can go back in and using those light sort of circular scrubby brush strokes, we're going to continue to work on the curls in Naomi's hair. Now, one of the nice things about using Windsor & Newton watercolor paper is it it really reflects colors very well and you can build up a lot of layers of color. Um, I really enjoy using it when I do floral studies because uh, I can just slather on the paint and it's not gonna just slough off. Um, so it's really fun to build up lush uh, blues and indigos in the background. Now, once I get this layer done, I'm gonna rework this back here so that everything's at least a little wet. And hopefully I can show you guys a trick using that carbon black. So we're just gonna lightly brush some in. I'm gonna zoom way in for you guys. We're just gonna lightly brush some of the carbon black in. Um, in sort of shaded areas of her hair 
and it's gonna, on this beautiful paper, it's gonna diffuse really nicely, but it's still gonna leave those highlights. So this is why it's nice to play around with nicer watercolor paper sometimes. Yeah, you can use the cheap stuff, but you can't get nearly the number of techniques out of the cheap stuff then you can get that you can get out of nicer papers. And I definitely do use cheap stuff, so I'm pretty familiar with it. Um, I use Canson Montval for my pages, actually, because that's what I can afford to paint, you know, a hundred plus watercolor pages on. Alright, we're gonna Oh, sorry, I was off camera. We're gonna actually let this dry. And it will dry lighter, unfortunately. It would be great if we could keep that nice dark color. And we may have to do this technique a few times over because I really want her hair to be very dark um, so that we're maintaining that contrast between her skin, her hair, the background, and then what's going to be the gold in her hair and the leaves falling. All right, guys, I'm gonna do one more layer in the hair tonight, and then I'll let this dry overnight. So one of the nice things about attaching your watercolor to a freestanding piece of chipboard is you can rotate it at will, um, which is a big deal for me because you really want to maximize uh, the angles that your wrist is most comfortable with uh, working at. rather than trying to force your body to do things that feel uncomfortable or that you know you can tell you're just not going to be able to pull a very confident line. You can also save the chipboard off of old sketchbooks if you're the sort who likes to throw or who does throw their sketchbooks away once they're completed. Um, most watercolor pads will have a chipboard back. I found that the fluid pads have a really nice thick one and I use them pretty frequently anyway. So, you know, there's usually a fairly fresh supply coming in. I suppose you could stretch your um, larger water piece, watercolor pieces on chipboard. But I prefer using plastic, like um, white uh, chloroplast plastic, uh, also known as gator board. It's the sort of board used for political signs. Um, I've had the same four pieces for Ah, oh, three or four years now, and there's no real damage, and it's really inexpensive. I mean, you do, you could get it for free by collecting signs after an election with the owner's permission or getting them out of garbage cans. I think that would be even easier. It is illegal to just pull up signs, but I mean, where I live in Nashville, uh, during election season, they will put the signs in my yard for me, and then I just hoard the signs away. Since I didn't ask them to put those signs in my yard. Hey, free plastic, right? But for small pieces like this, the chipboard's fine. I just wouldn't necessarily want it to get saturated and lose its internal structure while I'm trying to stretch a watercolor page on it. And since chipboard is actually made from, like very similar to cardboard, it's a, a wood pulp product it will absorb water and lose its structural integrity. Integrity. All right. Now to let that dry overnight, and then we can do our most saturated and darkest layer using carbon black. Hey guys, so it's the next day. Uh, my watercolors have had a chance to dry out overnight. So we're gonna go ahead and finish Naomi's hair, allow that to dry and do the gold paint and then the white gouache highlights. And we're still using that circular squiggle motion to indicate, indica oh gosh, indicate curls.
And even when working with very dark areas, we want to build up contrast. And I also wanted to add another layer of the green gold to her eyes. And I want to float some blue in that. So I'll go ahead and activate the blue. All right, now to let this dry and see what we get. All right, guys, now that that has dried, we're gonna go over into Carbon Black, which I already did a few drops of water to go ahead and activate it. And we're gonna use that to add our darkest shadows to Naomi's hair. All right, now to let that dry and then we can move on to the gold. All right, guys, so um, if you're using the Windsor and Newton gold paint, I highly recommend it. It's great. It gets its metallic property from the uh, suspended bronze particles. The only problem with it is if there's paint left on the threads of the cap or on the threads of the, actually, how do I, this, okay. So if there's paint on the threads of the cap or on the threads of the bottle, your bottle will get stuck and it can be very hard to open. And some people on, in their Amazon reviews even mention breaking their bottle in order to get at the paint inside. And at first I tried pouring some rubbing alcohol over it since this is a solvent, this is water soluble, but it's not suspended in water. It's suspended in a different solvent um, and that wasn't working. So then I ran it under the hot tap and it loosened it up enough that I could get it open. So if you're having trouble getting yours started, that might be the thing to do. And you can't really see it, but I like this paint for a couple reasons. One, it gets its metallic properties from suspended brass or bronze particles, sorry. So while those will fall out of solution, you do need to shake it frequently. I've even seen people talking about using like magnetic ink, magnetic ink stirring plates for this ink. And if you're using it that much, that might be a worthwhile investment. But I like putting a small amount into the cap if I'm doing a tiny piece like this and just squishing it. You can also recap and shake often. And a little bit actually goes a, a long way. I've had the same bottle for a year and a half and I've used it for some pretty large projects. And you saw me use this gold ink when I did the tone tan demonstration. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull out, wipe the threads off with a paper towel, wipe the threads from inside the cap as well. However, if it gets stuck, now I know that I just run it under some hot water for a little while and it should come free again. Always good to know those kind of tricks. So lastly, all we need to do is apply white wash. I'm actually going to use Copic Opaque White and to apply the gold paint, I used a Scepter Gold synthetic brush and I'm still going to use a synthetic brush to apply the opaque white. I just find that synthetics tend to hold up to um, heavier body paints much better than natural. Zoom in for you guys. Just adding a few strokes here and there to indicate highlight. And then on the gold leaves, I'm going to try to zoom in enough for you guys to see. I'm going to add just a little 
bit of white highlight over the gold. All right, we're just about done. And I'm just about off camera. I'm going to darken the little mole on her cheek. And add some dark brown to her pupil and her eyebrows. All right, so thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today and uh, helping me out with this tutorial. I hope you guys learned something. I hope I was able to demonstrate a technique that you found useful. If you enjoyed this video, do me, well, I meant to zoom out, do me a favor and go ahead and click like. That lets YouTube know that you enjoy this sort of content, that you'd like to see more of it. If you have any questions or suggestions or comments, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. If you really, really enjoyed this video, or if you know someone who would enjoy or benefit from it, please do me a huge favor and share this video to your social networks using the buttons below. Um, and if you're looking for more watercolor tutorials, head on over to my blog at natasoup.blogspot.com for loads and loads of tutorials. Just search watercolor basics and you should have a pretty good selection to pick from. So I'm Becca Hilburn. Oh wait, I forgot. <laughs> if you really, really enjoy content like this and you'd like to help me make more of it in the future, uh, there are a couple ways we can make that happen. One, if you are an artist or a librarian and you're looking for someone to come into your classroom, send me an email and we'll try to work something out. Um, I am located in the Nashville area, so your best shot is if you're in Tennessee, but I travel to New Orleans pretty frequently for shows and I have family over there. So if you're in Louisiana, um, we can also make something work. If you're not in either of those areas, you should send me an email anyway, because we may be able to work out a Skype visit where I create something like this for your kids. I'm used to working with all age levels. Um, so shoot me an email and let's work something out. Another way you can help out is by heading over to patreon.com slash natosoup and finding out how you can join the Patreon community. Your support enables me to make more content like this and it gives me a good idea on what to focus on as I often ask my patrons what they'd be interested in seeing. So again, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you again really soon.